I'm very excited to report some new interesting progress on the Looking Glass project. What's the Looking Glass project? I'm doing almost 200 FPS in Shadow of the Tomb Raider at almost 200 FPS, well, 120 FPS in our updates on a virtual machine that only has eight cores. This is a Windows virtual machine that is running underneath Arch Linux. This is a fresh install of Arch Linux. I'll show you how I did it. Uh, you can basically run any game that you want under Windows. You can even run games under Windows that complain about virtualization, games like Fortnite. It is possible to evade Fortnite's virtualization detection, but that is a huge pain in the butt, and I don't want to tell you exactly how to do that because then Epic Games will make it harder to detect when you're running in virtualization. There's, there's a game being played right now. Some companies don't want you to play a game in a virtual machine because you'll cheat. But really that's just a lack of skill in terms of the programmer securing it as it's running in a virtual machine because you can cheat when it's not running in a virtual machine because guess what? Windows runs in hypervisor mode anyway. Looking Glass. Looking Glass is a fantastic piece of software that brings sort of the promised land of being able to run a Windows virtual machine under Linux with full GPU acceleration. You can pass through a GPU. But there's an incredible update coming for Looking Glass that is to the indirect display driver, the IDD. If you're not familiar with pass-through and VFIO and that whole thing that I've been doing for like 10 years, basically you just, you have a GPU for your host system, it can be an iGPU or whatever, then you have a second GPU and you pass that through to a virtual machine and then Windows can run with the real piece of hardware. You can also do that with storage. So you can have a Windows virtual machine that has real storage, real NVMe, and a real display. And that's what we've done here on our Threadripper machine. This machine is built around the uh, Fractal North case. It's got a nice wood grain. We did a video on that. And this is our ASRock TRX50 motherboard. Yeah, I'm just using TRX50, the 32 core Threadripper CPU. I've also got a 25 gig Mellanox network card. Uh, Nvidia bought Mellanox, but Mellanox Connect X5, 25 gigabit. There's a lot of PCIe lanes here. This setup works fantastically well for all things Linux and Threadripper and everything else. And this Windows virtual machine is running exceedingly well as a virtual machine on our Threadripper platform. I even am running a virtual storage. I don't even have a second NVMe set up for our Windows system. Our virtual machine with eight cores passing through a 9070 non-XT, 179 FPS. You lose a little bit of overhead because it is running as a virtual machine, but keep in mind this is a 32 core Threadripper. It's not quite as fast per core as in four cores. It's still a phenomenal result if you just want to play some games. Boom, look at that. I close Looking Glass and I'm back to an Arch desktop. I launch Looking Glass and there we go. Now notice our Looking Glass window is smaller now, but it actually resized the Windows desktop. Yep, that's a feature of Looking Glass. When you resize Looking Glass, the Looking Glass client on Linux, if it's running on the Windows VM, it will resize to be whatever the number of available pixels that you have are. And yes, you can go full screen, so I can do that. And then this is running natively. We can see that we're getting our native resolution, but if you don't want to run full screen, that's okay. I can hit scroll lock F and it'll totally do that. Now, this indirect display driver is actually something very, very special because being able to play games and run this kind of stuff and that sort of thing. It's old hat for VFIO. If you're just learning about VFIO, this is a tremendous rabbit hole that you're about to go down. But the indirect display driver also has a trick up its sleeve and that is it unlocks the ability to use more than one core for graphics acceleration. So if you don't pass through a GPU and you just wanna be able to run a CPU based GPU, you can do that and it is dramatically faster than Spice and the VNC options that you have. So if you use a Vert Manager to create a virtual machine and you install the Looking Glass indirect display device, even though you don't have a GPU mapped, a second GPU mapped, if you throw a bunch of cores at that virtual machine, it will be able to run software emulation across many cores and you will get pretty significant acceleration. I did a video a couple of months ago on the difference between GPU accelerated Bing maps and non-GPU accelerated Bing maps with the Intel Flex GPU and you can see how terrible and janky it is when you, uh, you don't have a GPU driver. With the indirect display driver, you can get this kind of draggable performance. Now to be sure, it's using a lot of your CPU horsepower. Whereas with the default VGA, like no hardware acceleration driver, it's just gonna use one core, you're relegated to one core, which is why it is a stuttery, terrible mess. 
but and it's not it doesn't seem to be very well optimized this driver is a little bit more optimized and you're not getting something for nothing but this is a much more usable experience this is a dramatically more usable experience so for home lab for proxmox for anything even if you're not physically passing through a piece of hardware you should check out that looking glass indirect display uh, device driver which is coming soon it's not quite out yet check on uh, the forum or uh, the looking glass io website and see how that goes the other part of this setup that I really have to comment on is that this was a dream. This was super easy to set up. I was shocked how easy it was to set up with, with Arch. Uh, Linux firmware-git is something that you're gonna have to get with uh, Yay or Peru or whatever. Um, there are also community members that have packaged Looking Glass for Arch. Those are not officially supported because Looking Glass is not quite to a 1.0 yet, but they're basically bleeding edge. And so you can install the Git version of Looking Glass. You can get the the Git version of the indirect um, display device driver. You can get all the stuff that you need to be able to run this on the very latest kernel. I'm running this on a 9070. I can run the 9070 on the host. I can run the 9070 uh, as a virtual machine. The reset bug does still exist. For those of you that are new to the VFIO game, Code 43 and the reset bug, they're not necessarily the same thing. Sometimes you can't get the GPU to initialize whatsoever. Things are a little different as far as reset goes on the 9070. There is hope on the horizon for being able to reset, but what that means is that once the GPU gets into a certain state, you literally have to turn your machine off and back on in order to be able to use the GPU in a virtual machine. If everything shuts down correctly, and if the sun and the moon are aligned, and if you've got the right combination of hardware, it will be a little bit more reliable than other combinations of hardware. It's really, I wish it were a better situation in terms of GPU reset and VFIO. It's a little bit of a, a bleeding edge that you get into the whole IOMMU thing and resize bar and do you have to take extra steps in order to configure uh, you know, your virtualization manager. There's lots of threads about all of that on the forum, but don't lose sight of the innovation and the, the breakthroughs here because the breakthrough is that Looking Glass is very, very near to a 1.0 release in my opinion with the stability and, and the features that it has. And not to mention that even if you're not gonna use hardware pass-through, the indirect display driver is a thing that will make your life better in, in other scenarios. Enterprise virtual desktop users might not be too enthused about an indirect display driver that unlocks better performance because it means that their machines will have to have more CPU cores. And more CPU cores doing video acceleration is still not as good as hardware doing video acceleration and decompression and things like that. that that's really what makes the, the uh, virtual desktop experience where you remote into a virtual machine, either from the same machine or from another machine on the network, that's what makes the experience not great. That's when you notice that, yeah, it's not performing well or there's a, there's a delay or it feels like that you're underwater. Looking glass on the same host here with or without GPU acceleration, even running 3440 by 1440 without a second GPU is an incredibly awesome experience. It's quite good. I was shocked at how uh, good the experience was. I was shocked at how easy this was to set up on Arch. The Arch today in 2025 is easier, an easier setup for VFIO and pass through than uh, Ubuntu 24.04, um, the Debian, than Proxmox even than a whole bunch of other options. One other thing that I'll point out, there's a really great script that uh, the community helped put together and is, is, is fairly well battle hardened in terms of being able to uh, bind and unbind your GPU. So if you have multiple virtual machines that want to bind to a specific piece of hardware, you could do that. So you could have a, a banking virtual machine that has GPU acceleration, you could have a gaming virtual machine that has GPU acceleration, you could have a second gaming virtual machine that has GPU acceleration. They can't all run at the same time, but uh, they can all bind to the GPU, like if you're using Proxmox on your host or something like that. There's a script that works really well for this scenario. And as long as the virtual machine doesn't crash or, or do anything weird, then you can use that and bind and unbind. Some people use it for binding to their host and unbinding. So like if I wanted to use the 9070 on my host, but then shut down, log out of X, go to a, a textual command prompt and unbind AMD GPU and then pass that through to a virtual machine, that would be an option. You can, you can do that, assuming that the GPU hasn't crashed and it's not in a weird undefined state. Oh, one other note, 
it might be discouraging when you first set it up, that first boot on Arch, when you install the AMD Adrenaline drivers, it's very likely you're gonna get code 43. That's okay. Go through the setup, make sure you get all the steps, make sure that you get your uh, XML configuration as it is supposed to be, but shut your machine down and turn it back on because the initial driver installer from AMD seems to put the card into a state where it will code 43, at least on my particular setup. All I had to do was just turn the machine off and back on and then that was enough to clear the GPU and we're off to the races. This specific configuration is using a Sapphire 7600 for the host GPU and the 9070 um, from Asus for the pass-through GPU. So I'm getting great pass-through performance and great host performance. Both of those are using Linux firmware. You should also know that for the newest kernel in Arch, you really do need Linux firmware Git, not Linux firmware. There's, there's, a, there's a bug that went away when I updated the firmware where like you get one pixel column lines and some other unattractive stuff with the Linux firmware that is that comes from Pac-Man or that comes from uh, Arch's repositories, which that's cleared up on the newest firmware from Linux firmware Git. Oh, and before I forget, Looking Glass, donations. If you got a few extra bucks, this is an incredible progress. Definitely uh, send Jeff some, some pennies from heaven because this is a, a labor of love. This, was, this is such a good experience. I think that I'm going to uh, revamp my main Linux workstation, which is WRX90 instead of TRX50. TRX50 uh, is a very much better experience than it was on launch for enthusiasts. And now you can find some deals on TRX50 processors as well. And the RAM has come down and, you know, global macroeconomic conditions notwithstanding in terms of messing with pricing. Seems like we're, we're getting, getting some good stuff there. But I wanted to give you an update on the Looking Glass project and this milestone that we are very, very near to releasing. Check out the level one forum thread about the new improvements in Looking Glass because this is, uh, this is something special. I'm Wendell, this is level one. If you have any questions or I missed anything or you have your own uh, Looking Glass adventures you'd like to share in the forum, like, you know, tank operators or whatever, I don't know, uh, hit us up in the forum. All right, I'm signing out and I'll see you in the level one forums.